There's a new Thor movie coming out and the trailer already dropped on YouTube. Mjolnir has decided that somebody new is worthy of wielding him and that's Lorenzo. In this tutorial we're going to show you how to create Mjolnir in fake 3D in After Effects and we're also going to show you how to animate it and light it in After Effects. So let's get started! High kick! <laughs> Wat een leuk dat je het gebruiken. De, ah, okay. Deze. Guys, summer is here, so this means we need to use ND filters. Tada! ND filter, but you also have one. Like I said, it's summer and it's one shiny day, and Timo built himself like a thingy on a screen. It looks silly, Timo! But it works, Chanik! It looks silly! What do you mean, silly? Do you guys like to win a lot of prizes? Do you also like the super talented Daniel Schiffer? Well, you are in luck. Storyblocks, the sponsor for today's video, and Daniel Schiffer are teaming up to challenge you for an Edit My Video contest. You get to work with an exclusive collection of footage created by Daniel Schiffer himself. What do you need to do? Simple. Just like our editor Timo did, make an awesome edit of the footage no longer than 30 seconds. Submit it before May the 1st and get a chance to win awesome prizes. That's it! And oh yeah, Daniel Schiffer himself is going to be the judge, so he's going to see your awesome work. Now if you want to learn more about this competition or compete yourself, go to storyblocks.com slash Daniel Schiffer or just click the first link in the description below. Now I'm not gonna sum up all the awesome prizes as they are too many, but one of the main prizes is a Storyblocks one year unlimited all access subscription, which will give you an unlimited access to an ever expanding library with over 1 million royalty free high quality assets. You can find everything you need to create stunning edits or visual effects. Now besides that you can find all the stock assets in HD to 4K resolution, various After Effects templates, epic music and sound effects for your edits and so much more. Now like you know we use Storyblocks all the time. They help us to speed up our workflow and make our deadlines. We created numerous effects with assets from their library and we can recommend Storyblocks to every filmmaker. So if you want to know more about Storyblocks or the Daniel Schiffer competition, again go to storyblocks.com slash Daniel Schiffer or just click the first link in the description below. All right. What do we need? When you're going to catch Thor Summer, try to have an object for reference. For example, we use this pipe with duct tape all around just so we know when we're rotating it, which way and how much is actually rotating. And doing this makes it way easier in After Effects to animate the object. Now, since we're holding an object, we also need to paint it away. So a great tip is to shoot on a tripod. And of course, don't forget to take your empty shot. And then for the light, try to keep it as simple as possible. Don't go mixing 20 different colors because that's going to be very difficult to recreate back in After Effects. So let's create our fake 3D Mjolnir, which is actually a 2.5D object. And of course, this whole effect would be easier in Blender or Element 3D. However, this is a perfect alternative if you don't have any 3D experience. Before we can start with making our Mjolnir, we first need a reference picture. This you can simply find on Google, there are enough pictures of it from all sides. Once we have our reference picture, it's time to open up After Effects. Drag the picture into the timeline and mask out a piece of the hammer. We'll go for the stop piece first. When doing this, make sure that your lines are straight, otherwise we'll have these edges that don't line up when we're putting everything together. So always use the rectangle tool when cutting them out. And once this is done, let's duplicate the reference picture again and remove the current mask and mask out another part. This time we'll go for this long edge piece. As we are working with a more complex asset, we of course need to think on how we are going to put everything together. An important aspect here are the anchor points of each hammer piece. We found that it's easier to place your anchor point on a side of the hammer piece where it will connect with another one. For example, this long edge piece will connect with our top piece. So we placed our anchor point of the long edge piece on the side that connects both. This way if we rotate the long edge, it will rotate around the anchor point keeping it connected and making it easier to move around. With this done, let's enable the 3D layers from both pieces and to make it ourselves easier we can enable the for view mode right here in After Effects. This way we can more easily see what we are doing in the 3D space. Both of our pieces are already positioned next to each other. If this isn't the case for you, simply select them and use the XYZ axis levers to move them in place. Don't forget to keep an eye on the other viewports as well since we are working in 3D. Also, always use the levers, this way you will only move over one axis giving yourself more control. 
control. Let's select the long edge piece and since this needs to be tilted 45 degrees, we can simply use the rotation handles. Of course, hold the shift key to make it snap to that 45 degrees angle. And this is basically how you put everything together. By the way, with the last update of After Effects, you will have these new 3D space orbiting tools. This makes working on your 3D models much smoother as you can easily orbit around them. However, we can't use these tools to animate our hammer. This we will do manually. Now it's a matter of repeating this process for every side until you have a whole object in place. Again, pay attention to your anchor points and make it yourself easy by placing them right. Once all your sides are done and in place, select them and pre-compose them all. For the new pre-compose layer, we of course are going to enable the 3D layer property and we're also going to hit the collapse transformations option. This will tell After Effects to take the 3D properties of the layers inside the pre-comp into account. If everything went well, we can now move around and rotate our fake 3D Mjolnir model. Now, you'll probably notice that something is off on the handle. This is because we only have four sides making it a square instead of a cylinder. This is one drawback of using this method and we really try to fix it. For example, we have CC cylinder. With this we can get a perfect handle, but it won't move in our 3D space how we want. So this isn't the solution. However, if we really want to fix the handle, we found a paid solution on AE scripts. But as we aren't planning on any close-ups, we can get away with our square handle. The modeling work is done, so let's start animating this model, dragging the footage of your talent. And now it's only a matter of keyframing the position and rotation of the hammer model to match what your talent is doing. Because our talent is holding a stick, it will be much easier to animate. We just have to follow along with it. And like we said before, we're going to use these stickers on the stick to see how our hammer should turn, giving our movement a realistic feel. Once you're happy with how the animation looks, it's time to make it more realistic. And that means lighting. If you look at our scene, we have a very bright backlight, a key light, and of course an overall fill light. So that means we need to recreate a three-point light setup in After Effects. Right click in the composition timeline, go to new and select light. You'll get prompted with different settings and for our first light, which is our backlight, we will pick a spotlight. Now position the light to match your environment, meaning behind our hammer from the right and if needed you can always play around with the settings, like the intensity, cone angle and feather, the shadow diffusion and so on. Really try to match your real lights. Now do the same for the key light and for the fill light we'll be using an ambient light. Of course this ambient light will have the lowest intensity. Then some last fine tuning, we added the lumetric colors effect to color match the model to the footage, added the Gaussian blur to match the sharpness and of course added motion blur. To enable this you need to go back into your pre-comp, here enable motion blur for every layer and also do this in your final composition. And last but not least we rotoscoped our hand and placed that in front of our hammer, really giving it that feeling that we're holding the hammer. Now don't forget to add shadows if needed, we don't need one because our falls off screen. Of course don't forget to use the empty shot to mask out all the parts that you don't want. Like the stick our talent is holding, these two random guys on the side and everything else that needs to be gone. Now one very last thing, we also have this shot where our hammer is flying towards the camera. This is a simple animation where the hammer moves in the 3D space towards the camera. And again we color matched everything and this time we did need a shadow so we created a solid and animated it along with the hammer. And that's all there is to it. And that was it for today guys, I hope you liked our fake 3D Hammer of Thor. And guys, you are all worthy. Thank you so much for watching, thank you Storyblocks for the support, and of course, don't forget to join the Daniel Schiffer Challenge, and as always, stay creative. Now click this video here on my left if you want to learn more action hero effects. Click it!